evening here on the farm. It is 69 degrees. The Pac-12 Men's Soccer Conference opener. Number two ranked Stanford Cardinal, 4-0-1 oh, on the season. UCLA Bruins at 3-2 on the year. Ranked number 25 in this week's Coach's Poll. And off we go. The Bruins and the Cardinal. Enjoy the match. Here we go. UCLA won the first three of the season as they shut out UC Irvine and Virginia Tech. In fact, didn't even allow a single shot on goal in either of those two matches to start. 1-0 the final in both of those matches, and then they beat Liberty 5-2, but looking for their first win in 13 days as they dropped one to Grand Canyon 3-2 back on September the 5th. And then went on the road, their first road trip of the year, up to Portland to face the Pilots. And they dropped a 2-0 decision there. On the ground rolling towards Grassi, but Nate Crockford comes up and makes the collection. The UCLA keeper, the sophomore from Northfield, Illinois. Six foot four, has played every minute of the season so far for UCLA. Came on late last season, actually started the final four games. Bruins trying to set something up as Grassi. We told you about him at the start of the show. Bruins can certainly link up, but Stanford, one of their big strengths has been their organization, particularly on defense. They can dispossess you too. Jackson kill. Out to the far side. Finding Carlo Agostinelli has it chipped away. Riley Furt trying to get there and does. Andre Ochoa, the transfer from San Diego State, finding Furch. Furch. And he is met by Keegan Hughes. All six foot three, 190 pounds of the senior from Heath, Ohio. UCLA won the first matchup between these two last year. We'll dive deeper into that later in the show. Tied the game up here, a game that was played in an absolute downpour. I think there were two of every animal going up El Camino Real. And in fact, they actually had to stop that game at the end of regulation. It was tied at one apiece. The field was just unplayable. So it ended up being a 1-1 tie. Free kick coming for the Bruins just outside the 18. Left foot, Frank wide of the post. That was Tommy Silva who took it very, very quickly. Matt Frank, the fifth year senior from Bloomfield, Michigan, leads the Pac-12 in the goals, a lot, goals against average category and also in the save percentage category as well. Jeremy Gunn says that Matt Frank has been rock solid. He's praised his maturity throughout the year. Silva with a Cardinal bearing down upon him. Wants to bounce out of bounds and he throws it in to start it off. He'll probably do it again here. Stanford 4-0-1 on the year, ranked number two in the coaches poll. In the preseason coaches poll, the Cardinal were not in the top 25. They didn't even get a vote. But after wins over Villanova and SMU, somehow they vaulted from out of nowhere. Started from the bottom and then they are ranked number three in the next coaches poll. And they have since shimmied up one more spot to be known as the number two ranked team according to this week's coaches poll. And that's off of a 1-1 draw at Creighton. A match that Jeremy Gunn said was just a fantastically played game, an amazing game to watch. Stanford actually took the lead, Carlo Gostinelli, 41 seconds in. But Creighton able to equalize in the 74th minute. And Jeremy Gunn said, look, the final 15 minutes of that match was just was really rock 'em sock 'em soccer. As it just went back and forth. But neither team could, could get a result before it was all said and done. A reminder that 
There is no more overtime in college soccer. We'll probably dive deeper into that later in the show. Fisher sends it forward. Bounces out of bounds before Jackson Kill can get there. Aaron Edwards throws it in. Edwards, a sophomore from San Jose, California. About 15 miles down the road. Duty in the air. Getting it back before it's cleaned up by Fisher. What has been unusual for both of these teams, at least in the past four to five years or so, is, is how each of these respective teams spent their postseasons last year. UCLA was in the NCAA tournament for just the second time in the last five years. That coming after a streak of 35 consecutive NCAA tournament appearances. While Stanford did not make the NCAAs, finished 6-6-6 six, six, and six last year. It's Keegan Tingey sending it forward. I almost said Tanner Beza. He is in the building, but he's not playing. His eligibility is exhausted. It's Keegan Tingey, who wears number three for, for the Cardinal. Edwards out to the far side. Ball finds Furch. Fletcher Bank, who has been magnificent with two goals and four assists. Furch, so dangerous as a passer. At Rainbow's foot. Rainbow somehow kept it in bounds. Skips out of bounds. And a corner kick coming up for the Bruins, the first of the match. So should note that Cam Silly was down on his knees behind the midfield stripe for a moment, and just now jogging back into the mix to try to defend this corner kick from UCLA. Left foot bending off of Grassi's foot towards Rainboat, can't settle. Kill sends it out of bounds and into the stands. Edwards to throw it in. Bending towards the top of the 18 and the header goes awry. But a corner kick is going to be the next move here for both of these teams. Opening day in conference play in Pac-12 action. Cal over San Diego State 2-0. That the final from Berkeley. Many of you just watched that final get completed. Left foot from Diaz. Skips tried to find Edwards, but Cardinal defender got there first. And whistle time is called. Edwards still down trying to gather himself. Matt Frank, the Cardinal keeper, saw that the whole way and tried to get the, the referee's attention. Edwards back to his feet. All Pac-12 honorable mention last year. Played right back and right wing in 2021. Edwards shaking it off and staying in the match. And back to action. Crockford, the only one who can get to that one. Bruins, of course, coached by Ryan Jordan, who says he's happy with this group. So these guys got good results against good teams early on. He's happy with how they've been able to dictate possession. And how they've been able to use the ball to this point. But he did note a, a couple of things that did not go the Bruins' way against Portland in their 
last match that was played last week. Funny surface, number one. I believe that's a turf field up there, and that can take some getting used to. But, but more importantly, UCLA had to play the Grand Canyon game with just 10 men for 60 minutes of that match as Grayson Duty got, got shown the red card. So the Bruins had to play a man down for the majority of that match. Maybe still the legs weren't quite there. The sharpness maybe not quite there. On the scoreboard, it ended up being a 2-0 final for the Pilots. Ochoa tried to swoop in. Fletcher Bank tries to skip it outside. It does have enough to Will Riley. In the air, trying to find Agosta Nelly and going up and making the catch, using all six foot four of his frame, Crockford with the catch. Pressure now it's a bit more apparent with Kill. Bounces off of Noah Adnan. And Tingy back to Matt Frank. And the whistle called. And they're actually gonna roll that back to just behind the midfield stripe. Adnan, who scored against UCLA last year in the game here. Bank trying to establish position, but maybe give gave Diaz a bit of a shove. Cardinal pressuring again, this time Cam Silly coming up. Out of bounds. Far side turning. Will Riley has done well in his role as a right back. Will Cleary check that. First tripped up in the midfield. And the yellow card shown to Mark Fisher, his first of the year. So Furch takes the spill after Fisher tripped him up. Stanford with now seven yellow cards on the season. Edwards hesitates for a moment, finds Pietro Grassi. Ochoa turns. Finds his way free from two Cardinal defenders. Sosa. Furch didn't have a whole lot of room, but the windows closed so quickly against the Stanford defense. Silly. Doesn't link up with Kill. It's Grassi who snuffs that one out. Hard touch. Bank closes in. But UCLA to throw it in. Fletcher Bank, the freshman from Bakersfield. Four assists coming into the day. Tied for the top spot in the conference. There's Fletcher Bank, tried to poke it to kill. Bank almost got it back. Somehow finds its way outside and behind everyone. And played all the way back to Adna. Oh. 
Riley hassled a bit in the midfield. Silly weaving to Agostinelli. Shipped across the top of the box, trying to settle. The cross, too strong. Will Riley, the closest Cardinal to that one. Well, one thing that Stanford has certainly done very well so far this year, it's been getting in position to create chances to score, especially in the first half. They have really done a fantastic job of, of getting out on the front foot and doing it early. And talking to Jeremy Gunn, he said, look, we've, we've done well this year at emphasizing scoring and creating opportunities. And he said, you know, some teams are a bit more reserved in how they handle the ball, how they handle possession. Others possess it just to possess it. We want to possess to create scores. So far, that has worked. Diaz hunting. He goes down hard. UCLA wants a whistle. They don't get it. And Diaz was maybe trying to sell that one, perhaps a little bit. Tingy challenged by Ochoa. And out to Hughes. At Frank's foot. Off of Gostinelli. Well, as you might expect between Stanford and UCLA, things getting a bit chippy. Will Cleary with some contact, but he has not drawing the whistle. As we are just over 15 minutes in. Troy Clarity coming to you from the farm. Great to have you with us. Stanford and UCLA. Cardinal ranked number two. Bruins ranked number 25. And that got out of bounds before Riley was able to get a foot on it. Well, Stanford's new, well, not, maybe I shouldn't say it's a new offensive approach, but certainly their approach for, for this season, possessing it to, to get and create scoring chances has, has certainly paid off in a big way. And there have been no shortage of, of beneficiaries. Seven different Cardinal players have scored this year. Five of them underclassmen, by the way. Here's one of them, Fletcher Bank. Left foot, centered, almost got through. Well, a couple of black shirts were near the area, but neither of them could quite get a foot on it. Perhaps put it on goal. Just one shot so far in this one. It was not on goal, and that came off of UCLA. Matt Frank calling for it, getting there, beating Ochoa to the ball. Gostinelli gets it back. But he can be absolutely electric. But Edwards had that one the whole way. Switch to the near side, Tingy. <laughs> Aiming for the corner, but the only one there is Konstantinos Mihalidis. <laughs> and the goal kick is forthcoming for UCLA. Scoreless here in the early going between Stanford and UCLA. Yes. Summit of sorts between Silly and Edwards. Silly, one of the, the team captains for the Cardinal this year.
punched forward by Hughes. Mihalidis with it. Silva turning on the Jets. Just outside the box, chipped away. Falls to Ochoa. Andre Ochoa, originally from Anaheim, coming to the Bruins by way of San Diego State. He was actually all Pac-12 second team for the Aztecs a couple of seasons ago. Swiped by Ochoa. And out of bounds. Diaz, the last to touch it. The through ball. Grayson Duty gets there first. Played back with Ochoa chasing. All the way back to Frank. Adnan sends it forward. Nobody there except for Grassi. Grassi, the sophomore from Milan, Italy. Actually trained at the AC Milan Ac Academy. And he could have signed a pro contract right away, but his, he and his family both valued the education. So here he is playing college soccer for UCLA. Kill. Back to Silly. Back to Adna. Of course, UCLA, one of the best public schools in the country. Stanford, one of the best private schools in the country. Neither of them in class right now, as both of them are on the quarter system. I don't believe Stanford's first day of classes is, is until the 26th. But it was interesting talking to Ryan Jordan, the UCLA head coach, about the freshmen and how they've acclimated and adjusted. So, well, you know, once class begins, that's going to be another part of the acclimation process. Gostinelli shielded off, and the corner kick, forthcoming. Well, that was well handled by, by Silva. And now it's a Gostinelli who will set things up with the corner kick, the first one for Stanford today. Gostinelli, the redshirt junior from Paris, France, scored in back-to-back -back games, and he's actually on a four-game point streak. Scored against Creighton, 41 seconds in. He is terrific service. Let's see what he does here. Penalty spot was aimed towards Fletcher Bank, who was crashing in. Silly couldn't quite handle that one. Ochoa. Keeps it on the ground, but couldn't link up with Fletcher Bank. I keep mentioning Bank's first name because his twin brother Palmer is also on the team. He hasn't played yet, but a pair of, of Banks on the Stanford Cardinal squad. Both from Bakersfield, they play different positions. Palmer, more along the back line. Fletcher Bank has already proven his worth. Outside mid. I also very, very well at the left midfield position has Fletcher Bank. Just past the midway point of the first half. Both teams looking for scores. There's Fletcher Bank. Holds it up. Tingy. Fisher spinning, can't get enough on it. Jackson Kill was there. Gostinelli keeps it alive, aiming for Kill, finds Edwards instead. Hey, 
And that's a foul. No matter the sport. The takedown from behind. Konstantinos Mihalidis, senior from Cyprus. Konstantinos has come up big against Oregon State in his career. Two goals over the Beavers when they were ranked number one last year. UCLA won that one. Had a game winner against number nine Oregon State two seasons ago. So I'm sure he's got his calendar marked for September 29th when the Bruins host Oregon State down at Wallace Annenberg. Kind of a tough start for the Beavers to this point. We'll dive deeper into how things look up and down the, the Pac-12. So here we are, day one of the conference season. Oregon State and Washington picked to win the Pac-12 in the preseason poll. Edwards has done well so far. Looney trying to catch up and save it. Can't quite do it. Fletcher banked the quick throw in. Jackson kill. Looking for options, plays it back. Fletcher maybe quite try to get too cute there. Adding on the miss hit. Ochoa keeps it. Fisher comes back and cleans it up. Fisher, a guy who maybe doesn't show up a lot on the stat sheet, but makes a lot of plays like that. Cleaning things up in the midfield. Keeping things going. Jeremy Gunn calls him the engine room of the team. Covers a lot of ground, wins a lot of individual duels. Those are all things that I'm sure you would like your coach to say about you. Jeremy Gunn says those things about Mark Fisher. Substitution for UCLA, Ali DeVisser is in the game. He's a senior from Los Altos, not too far away from here, down in the South Bay. Of course, the South Bay here in Northern California is what, San Jose, Los Altos, Cupertino. South Bay in Southern California means something else completely different. Taken away by Sosa. Moonshot that almost falls into the stands. Well, coming into the match now, Will Cleary and this young man, Liam Doyle, the freshman from Tokyo, with two goals so far this season. One against SMU, in which we just banged one in off of a free kick. And we showed you his other goal this season. At the start of the show, he had a goal and two assists against San Jose State back on the fourth. He has been electric. Doyle, Kill, Agostinelli, Fletcher Bank. Doyle has it now. Fletcher Bank. Out to Tingy. Bank showed for it. Went back to Fisher instead. Back to Adna. Roll to Fletcher Bank. Don't do the give and go. Stanford looking for a way through, being patient. Again, possessing to try to create scoring chances. And as this game has gone, more and more of the match has been played on this end of the pitch. That's fairly even in the first half of the first half. Skips off a UCLA defender, and here comes a corner kick. Stanford, number 10, Carlo Agostinelli. Carlo Agostinelli to take it. Stanford's leading scorer entering tonight with three goals. Leads the Pac-12 in shots, by the way, with 20. A 
Agostinelli's right foot sailing towards Hughes in the mixer. Doyle tries to turn. Edwards gets ahead on it. Pope back four turning off the side net. The ball pinballed pin around the box, but the Cardinal can't convert. We'll take another look at it ourselves. As that one was sailing towards Keegan Hughes, not a bad way to go. Crockford hanging in there. Edwards using his head. Silly. And then Fletcher Bank with the, with the last look at it. So Stanford's best look comes up empty. Doyle poked forward, Agostinelli hangs on, but can't keep it. Well, and Edwards, with a little subtle shove in Agostinelli's back, maybe pushing Agostinelli off the ball, and maybe with that shove, he got called for it. So Edwards goes into the book, his second yellow card of the year. So maybe, in a sense, Edwards saving a potential opportunity for Stanford, but he ends up going into the book as a result. Leighton Purchase in the game now for Stanford, the junior from Denver. Just about 30 minutes in. I'm glad you're with us. Scoreless between Stanford and UCLA. A series that has been dominated historically by UCLA. Bruins 40 and 17 and 11 all time against Stanford. Crockford sends it high towards the midfield stripe. Stanford's done a fine job winning 50-50 balls. Fletcher Bank off and running. Heading towards the touch line. Pulled back post. Not quite there. Silly was on rushing. He's able to find some help outside. Cleary towards Doyle. Too many white shirts. Silly again. Off the Visser. Mihalidis. Nope. Yeah, tumble on the far side. As Riley had a little help going to ground. Oh, Riley, sophomore from Decatur, Georgia. He was a terrific holding mid for USL's Atlanta United, too. And one of his teammates, former Cardinal Amir Bashti. What a fun player he was to watch in the Stanford uniform. Keeping the theme of former Cardinal, doing big things at the next level. Doyle, silly. Nope. Sales well off course. Stanford turning up the tempo a bit in the last few minutes or so. Nate Crockford. Diaz, close, trying to fight off Hughes. The Cardinal clear. Chipped outside, silly. Fisher waits. Let your bank. Met by two white shirts. 
Carden will try the other side. Purchase. Silva comes in to sweep that one away. Tommy Silva, junior from Tucson, Arizona. His older brother, Ryan, ran cross country at Stanford. How about that? And Ryan actually set a pair of age group world records in the mile. So the, the Silva household, perhaps a house divided tonight. Then again, they're in Tucson. It's, that's wildcat country, so perhaps, maybe not. Who knows? Edwards to start it off. You later throw it in. Confirmed by the linesman on the far side with Silva to accept the honors. Stanford to throw it in. to the far side, one of the few spots left in sunlight. Doyle has some space. Tried to slide it to Tingy, but not enough. Play some duty right there. Turn. That was Cam Wilkerson, a freshman from Calabasas. Or from, check that, from Richmond, California. Over in the East Bay, Edwards takes a spill. Diaz contacted just outside the box. Diaz landed a bit hard there. In one other instance where he may have been trying to sell it a little bit, but this one was a bit of a, a hard landing as Will Cleary goes into the book. That's the second yellow for Stanford tonight. Here's another look. Kind of got him there a little bit. Dangerous boot. So the ball just on the outside of the side of the box. Matt Frank, Stanford keeper, at the very right of your screen in that previous shot. A look now, straight on, three-man wall. Left foot, sent away, Adnan. Wilkerson tries again, but only meets Cardinal. Stanford on the counter. Fletcher Bank turning on the Jets. Bank bumped by Mihalidis and forcing the corner. Well, that was well done. Defense turning to offense, even though they didn't get a chance to get a shot off on goal. That was well organized by Stanford very quickly. And Fletcher Bank finding another gear. Cross country runners. Fletcher also ran cross country. I think we saw a little bit of that skill in that sequence. Will Riley taking this one. Back post, the head, no. Cockcroft comes in. finishing off that sequence. Stanford to try again. Cardinal continue to win 50-50 balls and continue to keep possession. Fisher being chased back by Wilkerson.
purchase. Ends up at Doyle's foot. Has a couple of options. Gets it to purchase. Silly was trying to keep his feet, but couldn't. If he had, that might have been trouble for UCLA. Before Hughes can throw it in, reinforcements need to come in for the Cardinal. Here's Shane DeFlores, sophomore from Danville, California, over in the East Bay. Flores placing Riley. Choa versus Silly with Fletcher Bank coming in. Fancy footwork from Liam Doyle. Tingy swipes it to Fletcher Bank. Left foot one time in traffic. Can't get off a direct shot. Boy, and Leighton Purchase came crashing in. And if he'd gotten a clean hit on that one, that would have been big time trouble perhaps for the Bruins. Another look and, and another well set up situation as Fletcher Bank just finding the right spot to give Purchase a chance at it. Purchase, a young man who worked hard last year, according to Jeremy Gunn, was just unlucky in the scoring department. Well, he, he was lucky in his goal scored so far this year. That was against UC Davis. The Davis backup keeper was finishing out the game, and he was trying to execute just a, a regular kick, and it hit Purchase. Purchase blocked it, and the ball went back into the net. So after an unlucky 2021 season in the scoring department, Got a lucky goal there. You'll take him when you can get him. How you can get him. Bodies flying. Good through ball. Back post. Too much. Just beyond DeVisser's reach. And that built well for UCLA. With Jose Conte. A big part of that build for the Bruins. Conte. Came in the match a few moments ago, along with Kevin Diaz, who's been in since the start. But Conte, a redshirt sophomore from Valencia, Spain. And Conte, very, very dangerous in his own right. He actually scored in this building to tie it up between these two teams last year. Jose Sosa. Grassi lets it go. Duty. Switches field. Back to Edwards. Doyle now providing some pressure. Not in this exact instance. Visser fights off Fletcher Bank. Five minutes to go, first half. To Grassi. Back to Edwards. And here come the Cardinal. Fletcher Bank sizing it up, sending it forward. Doyle shielded off. Edwards played that one well. Pressed by Edwards. Here's a step to the four. Fletcher Bank, of course, very much in the mix as he as he had been as he has been for for the season so far. He's actually on a four-game point streak right now. And he's been he was praised by his high school coaches for his vision on the field. And he has used that to his advantage time and time again in the early portion of the season. 
After six matches into the season, here we are already in conference play. Seems like we got here to this part of the season in the blink of an eye, but here it is. Cardinal will host San Diego State right here on Sunday. Hughes. That's a foul. That's Conte. Sent flying after the contact from Hughes. Hughes, six foot five, or six, six foot three rather, 190. Conte, 5'9", 170. You do the math. Doyle and Fletcher Bank in the wall. Silva. Directing the traffic. Left foot, bending back post, overcooked. Less than three minutes to go in the first half. Zach Bohane, the freshman from Monte Sereno, California, coming in. Went to Los Gatos High School, so he's an all, he's also a South Bay kid, just down the road. Jeremy Gunn compared him very favorably to Drew Scundrich. Player from Stanford's recent past, which of course has been very, very good. Stanford with the tree peat, the national championships. There's Doyle fouled from behind by Mihalidis. Stanford national champs in 2015, 16, and 17. Establishing itself as one of the power programs in this sport. Trying to get back there. Six, six and six last year. And Jeremy Gunn realizes that, you know, during those championship years, you know, they fell on the right side of the fickle margins of this sport. 2021, not so much. It also didn't help that a lot of guys were only playing at 75%. He's feeling a lot better about things so far this year. From the Flores, the chip for the penalty spot. Fisher, the closest one to it, tries to settle. Nope. Back forward from Tingy. Cleared by UCLA, but the foul first. Fouled against the Cardinal. Final minute of the first half. It's Nate Crockford has a chat with the referee. Crockford, by the way, just had a birthday recently, September 6th along with his twin brother, Charlie, who's also on the team. So a couple of Crockfords for UCLA, a couple of Banks for Stanford. Mihalidis, high, Matt Frank able to sort through the clutter and make the catch. Aiming for Doyle. Ten, that Frank says, nine, all right, back eight, off Noah, I got seven, this. Six, five, four, he keeps it three, at his feet. Two, and the first one. half comes to an end. Chances for both teams, but no one can find the back of the net in the first 45 minutes. A game that Stanford seemed to have the upper hand through most, most, much of the first half, but scoreless. First 44 goals per game. Entering this matchup, second in the Pac-12. They put four in the back of the net against San Jose State. They've possessed, they have not scored. Meanwhile, UCLA would love to perhaps turn the tide, especially in the possession category. Convert on whatever opportunities that they face. Well, that's only the half of it. Off we go. Second half underway between Stanford and UCLA. Troy Clarity, great to have you alongside with us here on Pac-12 Bay Area, pac-12.com wherever and however else you happen to be watching us. Thanks for taking the time.
There's Edwards again. Jackson kill, able to keep it for a moment before Edwards. Tenacity wins the battle, gets the, the goal kick. We mentioned Stanford and their prowess in the scoring category so far this season, but don't forget what they've done defensively as well. Defense has really stepped up to the four, only allowing two goals in five and a half matches to this point this season, and one of those goals came on a penalty kick. So only one goal allowed in the normal phase of play. And Jeremy Gunn said, as I asked him about it, he said, defense needs to be a group mindset. And he says that there has certainly been a collective effort. It's part of the culture of this team. That has been one of the hallmarks of every Jeremy Gunn coach team, not just here at Stanford, but but elsewhere as well. And Gunn also noted that defense can be more than just a way of stifling attacks or, or stifling opponents, but it can also be a great way to, to start attacks. We've seen that time and time again for the Cardinal over the years. Bouncer back to Crockford, who was credited with one save in the first half. So when you're second in the Pac-12 in goals per game, and first in the goals against average category, is Stanford allowing 0.4 goals per game entering today, you're going to do some things. Stanford unbeaten in its first five. UCLA started off unbeaten in its first three, but dropped back-to-back -back games against Grand Canyon and Portland. So they're looking to get back in the win column for the first time in a couple of weeks. Furch sprinting. Adnan taken down. And here's the foul called on Furch. Furch says, hey, man, sorry about that. My bad. The senior from Florida, transferred from Florida Atlantic. Riley Furch actually did not play while he was at Florida Atlantic. But transferred to, to UCLA. Led the Pac-12 in 2019 with nine assists. So second team all Pac-12 that season was Furch. Cleary trying to fight to get some space. Riley. Bruins mounting. Conte. Falls to Silva. Mihalidis. Taken away by Riley, and then off Silva. This is the first day of conference play up and down the Pac-12. UCLA was picked to finish third in the preseason poll. So Castanelli with a bit of an extra shove against Aaron Edwards. Surprised that didn't get a notice from, from the official. So is Aaron from the looks of it. UCLA picked to finish third in the preseason poll. Stanford picked to finish fourth. And Edwards looking for a little retribution. And who's going in the book here? card has been shown. If it's against Stanford, it's, it's the Cardinals' third of the match. If it's against the Bruins, it's their second. UCLA standing over it. Or Stanford standing over the ball, rather, so. Huh? About anything. Imagine that it's yellow against, against the Bruins, and, and an unnecessary one. Quite honestly, if it's if it's being called what I think it is, not necessarily the foul on Edwards, but a Bruin came in and gave an unnecessary shove. And did it right in front of the referee. So that ref with not much of a choice. The 
Augusta Nelly right to Crockford. Well, let's try to discern what we can here. There's the foul by Edwards. And then the play stops. And I believe that's Sosa who comes in and gets the extra shove. Yeah, Jose Sosa. So, I believe he's the one who gets called for the yellow, although officially that might have gone against Adnan, which I don't think is correct. So we'll, we'll sort that out here and, and report on what we find as we go. Meanwhile, back to action. Towards Mihalidis. Grassi. Cooley. Calmly dispenses it. <laughs> Back to Cleary. Riley survives the side swipe. And then Edwards says, Oh, lay to Jackson Kill. Well, let's keep an eye on, on some of the emotions on the field right now, and the physicality on the field, as it appears to be ratcheting up a couple of notches here as we're in the early going of the second half. On the ground, out of bounds, corner kick. So Agostinelli will take it. Fourth corner of the match for the Cardinal. This is where Keegan Hughes can step to the four. He's lurking around the top of the 18. Noah Adnan there as well. From Agostinelli, high in the air towards Hughes, Hughes it off of. And do the corner on the other side. Hughes, six foot three, a good target. And intriguingly enough, Hughes was the leading scorer, the leading returning career scorer for Stanford this year, which is somewhat hard to do when you're a center back by trade, but Hughes over the years has certainly proven his worth on set pieces. Cardinal play it short. Riley, front post, no. Agostinelli, perhaps with another chance, bending it, no, in the mixer. Mihailidis can't quite get there. Cleared out, bouncing, and finally settled by UCLA as that one bounces towards Sunken Diamond, where Stanford baseball plays. How about that? Stanford's leading returning scorer this year, Keegan Hughes. And he has four. Fisher. Bouncing towards Cam Silly. Edwards snaps it down. Conte goes to ground. Hughes lets it bounce and throws it in to Will Cleary, the freshman from Windsor, Connecticut. And, you know, we've given a lot of attention to the, the freshmen and the youngsters who have done quite well in the attack. Will Cleary, a freshman who has looked very good at the right back spot. And he's actually a center mid by trade. But in preseason, so he's given a look at right back, and he has stayed there ever since. Kill, the chest trap, bump from behind by Edwards. Poked forward, rolling towards Kill. It's then broken up by the Bruins. Shoving the back, that's a foul. Uh, 
as Jose Conte from Valencia, Spain. Conte with a big, big goal last year for the Bruins, tying it up in the 86th minute against UC Santa Barbara. In the first round of the NCAA tournament last year, Bruins went on to win that one in overtime. In fact, UCLA did quite well in OT last year, went 3-0. Won't have that chance this year. As overtime has been taken off the books, the biggest rule change in all of college soccer, both the men's and the women's sides. And neither of these coaches are thrilled about it. We'll try to get to that later in the show. Mihalidis crossing, oh, just off target. Konstantinos Mihailidis with the perfect center. But it just could not quite find a teammate's foot. Mihailidis setting it up. It was just in front of a potential Bruin opportunity. I believe that was Kevin Diaz. side of Edwards' head. But Grayson Duty there to send that one out of bounds. Doinks off the awning on the far side. Grayson Duty, a junior from Hermosa Beach, California. His parents actually went to USC. His older sister goes to USC. His younger sister likes USC. But for Grayson, UCLA was always his dream school. Of course, I'm sure it also helps that UCLA actually has a men's soccer program. Hughes goes to ground with Diaz, who's been up all over the place for the UCLA attack. The turn from Sosa. Furch finds Mihalidis. Left foot, nope. Hughes instead. Hughes has been busy, that's what he does. The dominant center back captain, as Jeremy Gunn describes him. Long throw made it into the box, but Noah Adnan shielding off Conte. Diaz and Hughes. And a goal kick is the call. Kevin Diaz, very busy. The senior from Norwalk, California, started his collegiate career at Cerritos College. Had a car accident his freshman year and the uh, Subsequent injury cost him his freshman season. He actually had to be airlifted from the scene of that accident. But Diaz fully recovered and has been quite productive on the collegiate level, not just for Cerritos, but at UCLA. Conte outside. Balance starting to tilt a little bit more towards this end of the pitch. Although Stanford will now throw it in and try to bring it back to the side of the pitch that it has been on for much of this match to this point. Sosa almost made the press box on the far side. Settled to Agassinelli. Will he strike? He does, but well off target and out of the park. And off into the eucalyptus curtain. Well, you could kind of see that coming the whole way when that ball was rolling towards Agassinelli. You knew that he was sizing it up. Took a crack at it. 
he could hit it, just not in that instance. Nice feed from Silly. And bang from Agostinelli. Another look from behind the net. High and wide. Cleary, high in the air, but nobody home except for Crockford. Mentioned Nate Crockford's brother, Charlie, twin brothers, both from Northfield, Illinois. Charlie said he wasn't always recruited by the same schools as Nate because they played different positions. But he told those schools that were interested in him and, and not Nate as well. He said, look, we're, we're a package deal. Take one of us, you take us both. Kill, hangs on. Kill, Agostinelli back across. I thought he might try to take that one towards the touchline a bit. Great combination, back post, Agostinelli to Heather Edwards. Cardinal doing a fantastic job of linking once again. Setting up yet another corner kick opportunity. Coming into this match, Stanford with 36 corner kicks. Time for second in the Pac-12. Substitutions for Stanford, the Flores and Doyle re-entering the match. Corner kick for Stanford, number 10, Carlo Agostinelli. Here's Agostinelli. Starting to feel it a little bit more here in the last few minutes. Right foot with some weight. Gosnelli will try it again. Back post. Almost fell to a Cardinal player. I believe that was Doyle who was closest to it. And again. Edwards. Chest trap. Turn, Cleary, in the air, Adnan Crockford wins that one. So Nate and Charlie, both Bruins. Charlie has played in a couple of games, actually three of them so far this season. Breeze starting to pick up here at Kagan Stadium. Bit of a chill in the air. It feels terrific out here. It feels a lot better than it did around these parts last week. Ugh. It's 106 degrees here on Tuesday of last week with the big heat wave that hit the Bay Area in Northern California. Of course, it affected a lot of things in Southern California, too. Riley turns, finds Doyle, met by Edwards, and dispossessed. Furch off target. Fletch the step over. Riley catches up with it, pokes it to Cleary. In the corner, De Flores punched away. And the back flick by Furch. Crockford with the two hand punch out. Punch out. What a great game that was on Nintendo. I'm, I'm dating myself, I know. In the corner. Sosa. In a handball call, Fletcher Banks says, you sure? Well, let's take a, another look. A superb cross to Flores, waiting, sizing it up, and then it was met by Crockford. Get it away. 
So well centered. The only one there was Crockford. Meanwhile, Adnan with a fine defensive play. But UCLA about to throw it in. Mihalidis. Nobody home. Earlier day in Pac-12 action, Cal beat San Diego State 2-0. That's the only other conference game being played today. Oregon State's hosting Seattle U. That's always intriguing. And they're scoreless in the 29th minute. And then tomorrow it's Michigan State at Washington. Boy, Edwards with an emphatic winning of that ball. Finds Conte. Boy, and a bit of a feint there. And it, it, it cost the Bruin on the far side. Stanford takes it right back. Bruins win it, and they wait. So Michigan State versus Washington in football tomorrow. Michigan State versus Washington in football on Saturday. Of course, one game being played at Husky Soccer Field. The football game being played at Husky Stadium. How the guys are going to be on that one. Foul called. And Silva takes a spill. Boy, Oregon State off to a, a tough start so far. As they're 1-2-1 one, and one to, to start the season. They were picked to win, or at least they were, they shared the top spot of the Pac-12 preseason poll with Washington. So a bit of a, 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 a head-scratching start for the Beavers, at least if you want to compare it to the preseason poll. Still a lot of ball left to be played. We're only just now getting started in conference action. Washington looks good. Stanford, of course, has played well. And UCLA got off to a good start. Trying to win their first match in a couple of weeks. And for UCLA, number 20, Thomas Rainbow. And Thomas Rainbow comes back in. The freshman from... Wellington, New Zealand. He's originally from New Zealand, but his family moved to Vancouver, where he played for the Whitecaps Academy. While he was in New Zealand, he trained with the New Zealand youth national teams on the U-17 and U-20 level. Leighton Purchase also back in a match for the Cardinals. Continue to throw it in. Out of bounds. Well, what a what a season for UCLA last year, Ryan Jordan. The squad won three games in the 2020 campaign, 11 last year, so an, so an eight-win turnaround. He's used to turnarounds, by the way. Jordan, the head coach at Pacific before coming to UCLA. And at Pacific in 2015, they won just one match. Well handled by Stanford on the far side. And it's been one of the hallmarks of, of Stanford this season. They have defended the box very well. Keegan Hughes, in particular, had a superb play against Villanova in the season opener, in which the Wildcat attacker was almost one-on-one, -on -one, but Hughes was able to recover and make a big block and help preserve Stanford's 1-0 lead at that point in the second half, and that ended up being the final. Ryan Jordan was the head coach for the Pacific Tigers 2013 to 2018 in the 2015 season. His team went 1-15 and 1. But the next season, they went 13-4 and 2. It's the biggest single season turnaround 
in Division I men's soccer history. So an eight-win turnaround is impressive. That's what Ryan Jordan was able to pull off with the Bruins last year. How about a 12-win turnaround? That's the record. And I asked him what it meant to bring the Bruins back into the NCAA tournament for just the second time in five years after UCLA had made 35 in a row. And he said, look, it's the, it's the expectation, right? This, is, this should be the expectation for this program every single year. Admitted that they were rebuilding his first couple years. Remember, his first year, he only had 18 players on the roster. You need 25, really. Down the far side, Fletcher Bank handles that one with a plump. Coming near side. Enough to Cleary, yes. Back to Fisher. Cardinal switch. But Ryan Jordan said, we were rebuilding. We're back on track. Now we got to back it up and make the NCAAs every year. Sosa. Ball's out of bounds. Still looking for our first score between UCLA and Stanford. As a Bruin player is on his back on the far side. And getting a little bit of a attention from the UCLA training staff and looking at his looking at his upper body. May have taking a, a blow to the head. It's grace and duty. Well, a reminder that there is no overtime in college soccer this year. That was a big rule change that was that was implemented this past offseason, both on the men's and the women's sides. And I asked both Jeremy Gunn and Ryan Jordan for for their thoughts on it. And, and Jeremy Gunn said, you know, that we're gonna miss the excitement of overtime and we're gonna lose some iconic moments. But it also changes some things for coaches as well. Number one, how does this change the NCAA selection process? And number two, do coaches now take more risks in regulation, specifically in the last 15 minutes? As Cam Silly re-enters the match for Stanford. And Pablo Greenlee enters for the Bruins. But the fact that knowing that there is no overtime anymore, does that change how coaches approach the final 15 minutes? And Intriguingly enough, Stanford found itself in that situation against Creighton last week when the Blue Jays tied the game in the 74th minute. And he said the final 15 minutes of that one was just back and forth soccer. He enjoyed it a lot. But does that kind of change your approach a little bit as a coach, knowing that there is no more overtime that you might be able to hang on and play for? To the touchline. Poked, still in the box, blocked by the Bruins, coming on and absorbing a laser. I believe that was Furch. Boy, Furch will be wearing that one. Cleary, a lot of Jocelyn on that far side. The ball falls out of bounds. After all that, it's merely a goal kick. So those are Jeremy Gunn's thoughts on no more overtime and in college soccer, Ryan Jordan was a, a bit more emphatic with his thoughts. He said, look, I'm not a fan of this at all. He said that when they did the research on games and how many of them are decided in overtime, he said 53% of games are decided in overtime. And pointed out that UCLA went 3-0 in overtime last year. So the result is better than the tie. 
And going back to and agreeing with what Jeremy Gunn had said, Ryan Jordan said, look, if you're the NCAA selection committee, how do you differentiate between ties? You need results. You need wins. How can you differentiate it if everyone's tying? Inside the box. Nope. A quick one to Fletcher Bank. Met by Greenlee. Greenlee goes to ground and wins. Who's it off of? UCLA corner kick. Boy, Bank is dripping with sweat. He has been working hard. Small sample size for his career, just five and a half plus matches. That kind of seems to be his standard operating procedure. De Flores with the corner kick. Hard towards the front post and doesn't really have a chance. But we'll do it again. So it was last touched by a UCLA defender. From De Flores. Tries the same spot. Better aim, but it also finds a UCLA defender. And it's out of bounds. So Ryan Jordan, not a fan. The fact that there's no more overtime as DeVisser comes off. Duty comes back in for UCLA. We should also note that in the postseason, you play two full 10-minute overtime periods. So there's no more golden goal in the postseason. So we should note that as well. So if the game is over after 90 minutes, in the regular season, just goes in the book as a tie. In the postseason, you play two full 10-minute overtime periods. And then after that, if you need to, you go to the penalty kicks. And Jordan also pointed out that it, the new rule just kind of doesn't mesh with the substitution rules here in college soccer because you have unlimited substitutions. Doyle. Cleary. Tried to poke it forward. Actually, that was purchase. Out to the far side. Final 15 minutes of this one upon us. Off of Grassi in another corner kick. Stanford just keeps pushing. That one was off of Grassi. Still growing in leadership, according to Ryan Jordan. You might expect that as a sophomore, but certainly has has earned his stripes as one of the best in the business. Front post again. I believe Duty knocked that one out. Substitution rules, as liberal as they are in college, you can manage the student athlete's playing time much better than you can if, as you would, if there were limited substitution rules. You where you could only substitute two, three, four, five times a game, perhaps. And Ryan Jordan says that just doesn't mesh with with playing shorter games. So a, a lot of considerations. And the majority of the coaches I've talked to on this aren't big fans of the rule. Penn State head coach for the women's side, Erica Dombach, said, Look, we're not going to talk about this this time next year. Okay. Out to Doyle. Doyle. Doyle can strike. Keep that in mind. Didn't quite have the angle there. Conte almost chased it down. Stays in bounds somehow. Doyle, will he strike here? Edwards just impeded him. Doyle poke. 
Folks, no. Well, Aaron Edwards has been in the right place at the right time more often than not all evening long. And he was just able to stay in front of Doyle just enough to prevent a clean shot. The only opportunity that Stanford had in that sequence was a poke. Tenth corner kick of the match for Stanford. High back post. Snap header. No. Stanford wants a whistle. Don't get it. And for UCLA, number eight, Andre Ochoa. Andre Ochoa back in the match. Transfer from San Diego State. Told the Daily Bruin, I feel right at home here in Westwood. Brian Jordan noting that, yeah, he's, he's fit in extremely well to what he and the program do at UCLA. Outside, off Edwards. Corners keep coming. Can the Cardinal convert? The Bruin defense hanging in there. To Flores. To Fisher. So have to try another different way forward. Skip forward, no. Conte slides it. To Tingy. That one falls out of bounds. So, yeah, neither Jordan nor Gunn thrilled with the fact that there's no more overtime and no more golden goals. As a broadcaster, I'm not too thrilled with it either. But hey, no one asked us. Will Riley back in the match, along with Carlo Gostinelli. As each team making adjustments and gearing up for the final. 10 plus minutes of this match. Rainbow's chest. Sosa. Silva. Down towards Rainbow. He and Cleary fighting for it. Cleary wins it. Stanford to throw it in with 10 minutes to go. Conte was giving chase. Here comes Hughes to Cleary. Behind Doyle. One time to Riley. Riley waiting. Doyle hard tipped off by Crockford. Boy, what a laser from Liam Doyle. Holy cow. That one left a vapor trail. Crawford said, man, that, that might have hurt my hands a little bit. Let's take another look ourselves. As Doyle, just with a whistler. Crawford able to reach out and just get some fingertips on it and deflect that one out of harm's way because that one had an ear for the far post. Edwards down on his knees. Boy, he has worked so hard all match long. Big guy, strong guy. Ryan Jordan says he gets fouled a lot because he can take the punishment. Meanwhile, as we return, Towards action, not quite. Keegan Tingy being told, hey, let's let's take it back a few steps, and now you can throw it in from there. And Tingy goes ahead and moves a couple steps closer to where he had been before. Oh, 
Third save of the evening, by the way, for Crockford. Two shots for UCLA tonight, none on goal. Silly. Squeezes it through to Riley. Riley. Dispossessed. Towards Conte. Adnan finds Fisher. Just two shots for the Bruins tonight. And this is a Bruin team that averaged just over 10 shots per game coming into this one. That's fourth in the Pac-12. A reminder that in men's soccer, the Pac-12 is a six-team league. Meanwhile, Stanford opponents averaging nine shots per game entering this one. So both teams playing below the line. Or if you want to look at it this way, UCLA playing below the line, Stanford playing above it in that category. Eight minutes left. Towards Agostinelli. Bouncing the corner, rolls out beyond the baseline, and a goal kick. As Will Riley says, man, I, I, I ran all that way. Can I at least get a corner out of that? Nope. NBA CLA number 26, J.C. Cortez. J.C. Cortez coming in the match for the Bruins, a freshman from Ridgewood, New Jersey. Now played in all of UCLA's matches so far this year. JC was called up to the youth national team camps for both the USA and Peru. How cool is that? His rainbow comes out. Crockford waiting. As Cam Wilkerson was having a brief chat with the, the referee. Chat is over. We're still waiting. UCLA ranked number 25, Stanford ranked number two. Great way to start off Pac-12 conference play here on the men's soccer side. Hard landing. Doyle, Agostinelli, Doyle. Doyle loses his footing. We play on. Grassi cleans it up. Hard slide tackle from behind, and that gets the whistle, rightfully so. Doyle, it's changing glares with Jose Sosa. Time getting tight and tempers getting testy. Hughes and Diaz. That is, that's been a battle to watch all night. And granted, UCLA has not had the ball that much, especially after about the 15th minute or so, but Silva's had an escort, or Diaz rather, has had an escort throughout much of this match, and that escort has been Hughes. Edwards showing composure, but finding Cam Silly. The 
shield off, and the Gossinelli wins it. Doyle to the penalty spot, trying to turn, finds a teammate, can't get off a shot. And poked away. Stanford to throw it in. Superb play by Carlo Agostinelli to give his team even a chance after Edwards tried to shield him off and let the ball go out of bounds. Stanford will try it again. Poked. Nope. Doesn't quite have enough. Riley misses it. It's out of bounds. Boy, Doyle tried to, to set it up, and that was actually the, the sequence from a few minutes ago. Crockford knocked it away. Inside five minutes remaining. Edwards throwing it in. Nice catch by the ball boy. That's about Frank who hasn't had much to do tonight. Edwards on the ground. Both teams trying to settle things down. Build something. Doyle sends it far side. Ochoa turns. Finds Wilkerson. Conte bothered on the far side. Riley catches up with it. Gets a little bit of room from an on-rushing Diaz to clear it. Riley surveying the options. Terrific through ball. But no. And another corner kick coming up for the Cardinal. I believe that was Silly who fed that ball through. And after the ball bounced out beyond the back line, Silly hopped around and said, ooh, I had that one. Corner kick number 12 for Stanford. Here it is. Bending towards Hughes. And the clear. Lands beyond the back wall of Kagan Stadium. And he's probably rolling towards Sunken Diamond. Maybe someone's heading out to the parking lot. I can't imagine who would be leaving the game at this point, but now they may have a souvenir. Doyle fights for it and commits the foul. Two minutes to go. You want a result, you don't want a tie. Especially in this day and age where there is no overtime. Stanford turning up the pressure. Conte. Cortez, Silva, Crockford, falls to Cleary, chest trap and a turn by Fletcher Bank. That was headed towards Agostinelli, but it found Edwards. There is one minute. Final the minute. Second Diaz waits. Cortez. Back to Diaz. Sosa. 
Playing it back to Crockford. Gostinelli and Doyle. Doyle jostling with Edwards. Jeremy Gunn says, here, throw it in. Spills off. Good through ball. Shot blocked. Crockford, second effort, spills to a Gostinelli, and he misses. Agostinelli had the look high and wide, and with that, this game ends in a tie. What a flurry to finish, but no one finds the back of the net. Let's take another look. Fletcher Bank with one chance. Couldn't quite get off the second one. Agostinelli just tried the flick, but it was high and it was wide. Boy, Crockford hung in there. But Agostinelli with the last look. 